Is it? <laughs> of course, I just. It wouldn't be a stream uh, if we didn't have sound trouble. <laughs> there we go. Hi. There we go. So just pretend you heard everything I just told you, uh, and let's get started. That sounds great. <laughs> I'll play some music. Got a bunch of music. There we are. That was so much fun. I'm so glad you all heard everything that I said. Uh, that way I don't have to say it twice. Uh, but I am going to say it twice, because you're like, ah, I don't know what you said while well, you were muted. Um, I don't know how loud the music is. This is a new setup I'm doing, so if the music is too loud or too soft, let me know. And then I will explain what I already told you. Music too loud? Okay. So let's go down a little bit. That should be good. Alright, so what I said <laughs> is uh, welcome to the live stream. I'm going to be doing a uh, basic, uh, just showing you the basics that I do behind the scenes sometimes to um, work with our various files. If you saw the thumbnail, you know that I have over a million files relating to Legend of Dragoon. Yes, some of them are duplicates. I am very curious what the real number is. Um, Today I'm going through some images, like promo images and concept art and things like that, that we can legally put on the official website. Uh, the thing we can't legally put on the website or share in Discord is raw assets that are in the game, on the game discs. So, um, uh, music files, the sound effects for uh, additions and things, technically, uh, we have to transform them in some way for it to be fair use. So uh, this this is way easier. I just take the promo images, here's the promo image, here's the concept art, we can do whatever the hell we want with, with the sharing and the posting and the downloading. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna continue some sorting I've done in the past, continue that, and now we'll put some of that on the LD website. Um, some of these images have been available already on Google Drive in the past, but um, We've moved almost everything away from that to our own web server, so that's part of what all this is. So uh, I'm just gonna jump right into it and do that. Now for the music of the stream, I was trying to get a uh, like overlay thing working where it would show what's playing next every time a new song comes up. I got like 95% of the way there and then it was like no song playing, even though I had stuff playing. Uh, so I'll just tell you quickly an overview of what music's playing. Uh, we have a whole set of lo-fi music from JP Soundworks. Um, these will all be shuffled, by the way, but this is the flat list. So we got uh, JP Soundworks first. Then we've got a bunch of tracks from Lloyd Sorrow. Thank you so much to both of them. Uh, Lloyd's been working on uh, remastering the soundtrack, so it sounds basically the same, just, just updated, as opposed to uh, other like remixes and things that would take more liberties with rearranging the song and making it sound totally different. And then we have uh, Tessa Nail, who has uh, donated like s almost 10 songs of various kinds. I have uh, been a fan of Reap What You Soa for a long time. That'll be coming up at some point, I imagine. So, uh, yeah. Hello, Sind Gaming. You're not late. I I was late. I was like three minutes late to start the stream trying to get the music display working. And someone's messaging me on Discord. This does not matter right now. Okay, I'm gonna mute that for three hours. Okay, so let's do some stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new page on the website somewhere to uh, to put this resource. Maybe I'll put it under resources for now. And um, we'll create a new uh, like fan kit kind of thing. I want to expand on the different things that we can we can use for stuff. Whether it's just to, like here's here's all the promo art and concept art, or here's like a pack of Discord avatars. We don't have much on there right now, so I want to help expand that by setting up this kit. So, let's go over here, and let's go over here, there we are. And I'm just doing a basic monitor capture for like 
the whole stream. It's not gonna be anything too fancy. And I've got this is the this is the folder where uh, all the magic happens, whether it's uh, doing community management stuff or managing our socials like Discord and Twitter and all that stuff, or um, website stuff, uh, modding secret files that I can't show you yet, things like that. Um, and a lot of unsorted things that need to be sorted, and I'm only one person, so. Let's see where to start with. We have an external catalog. So I've got an internal and an external uh, catalog. The internal catalog is mostly just game files. Um, these are the things you technically can't share with other people because legal reasons but you are allowed to extract them yourself with tools that are created by yourself or other people. Um, so for example, Doom Metal makes the um, model extractor tool. Uh, I can use that to extract models and I work with them in Blender and do whatever post-production effects I want and make new, new uh, screenshots and videos. We also have the uh, external catalog, which just means things that aren't literally inside the game files. Um, that's how I have it organized for now, anyway. Hello, Matthew. Hello, everybody else. Psychronix, good to see you. So I've got uh, a number of different things. Concept art. Let's crack this open. So concept art, I found a whole bunch. Um... God, what was it, last year or the year before? And it's all these different, like, stencils, uh, sketches. And part of what I want to do with some of these is do, like, before and after comparisons, where we compare, like, the sketch to the in-game background, and we'll do some short, like, videos on the channel here about that. Uh, the NPC does not look like that. <laughs> That's one of the differences. But, like, the big, the big, like, shield or, or whatever with the spikes, uh, is very similar, and... You know, the barrels full of weapons and all that stuff uh, really added to the atmosphere of that scene. So yeah, uh, I'll be clearing out various duplicates, making sure I have one copy of each file. Kind of like Noah's Ark, but just one copy of each file. Um, one will be the original format, and one will be a common format that people can use without having to convert it. So like if it's a TIF file, there'll be a TIF and a PNG for download. That's the idea there. And some of these I need to double check and make sure they're actually uh, official works. There might be a piece of fan art or two in here that got slipped in, but I'm 99% sure of, of most of these, so. All right. I'll drop that down a little bit more. LOD lo-fi moments that sever at the chains too. I like that. <laughs> yeah, this this one is pretty new. Yeah, I think uh, JP made this in the last year or two, if I'm not mistaken. Now renders, what what defines a render? Technically, a render can be just about anything, but for these purposes, a render is defined as like. A, uh, a perfect snapshot of a 3D scene or object um, where it's obviously a, a 3D model in most cases. So for example, uh, so you want to ask me what to put that? Let's, let's do the uh, PNG. There we go. Open. There we go. This is a render. Hi res. They don't have to be high-res, but this is a high-res render in 3D of Lavitz's gorgeous face. Very nice quality for the time period. Look at all these uh, marks that make the armor look imperfect, like it's been in battle. All the way through the pants and then down to the legs. And the detail uh, engraving on the spearhead. We can... This is just amazing how much detail we've been able to save just due to sheer luck that Sony provided images this large uh, in some cases. 
Now we don't always get so lucky. There are a very limited number of images that are that high quality, but some we do have and it's very, very nice. So uh, I'm gonna set up a second thingy. New window. I'll put this over here. And we're going to call this um, archive for now, or web images for website. And we want one of each. Now I've already done some of the work as you can see. There are some uh, lower res renders, they're pretty decent. Um, a little bit higher than what you get in-game. And uh, unlike the images that are in-game, uh, these ones are already pre-squished. So for whatever reason, when Sony was creating the files that would be used in the game for these backgrounds, they created them too wide on purpose. Um, and then the game code knows to squish those to the correct aspect ratio. Um, so for example, this image We've got the moon that never sets, it's round. Um, the, the file that displays this scene is stretched and you can tell because the moon is like kind of oblong and then the game code squishes it and the moon looks like a circle again. Uh, so these renders were shipped just in the correct aspect ratio already, which is, which is good. You don't want to ship out promo renders and have them be like unsquished. There's a, there's a whole set of these. Flamble Tower. Uh, oh, there's a big Divine Dragon. And Big Dart. I have uh, also made versions that do and don't have the white background. Um, because, well, number one, you can choose whether you have transparency. And number two, with, with these um, files, so the original TIF file is just a high-res image format. Um, sometimes the alpha layer that dictates which parts are transparent in the image is uh, imperfect. Like the artist who made these files didn't set up uh, what's called the alpha mask properly and so there's some weird like bubbly gray stuff kind of floating in the background where it should just be clear. Um, so what we're gonna have for those situations is we'll have the um, official transparency mask that the devs gave us um, and then a modified version that cleans up the image. Uh, I did this for Dart's Dragoon form, for example. He's in here somewhere. I don't know why he's not in here though, because like I did... There's a whole there's a whole thing for Dart as a Dragoon. So some of my files are just not in the right place. So we've got these. We've got... This one, that's without the dragon. Uh, we'll do that, 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 that. And we'll move those over. And with Lavitz, you see Lavitz uh, a large number of times here. Um, that is because I was doing some experiments with a couple different programs to see if Photoshop or Krita would export a larger or smaller PNG file, for example, um, and also WebB. So let's say I do, yeah, 4.74 megabytes for Photoshop. That one's not transparent. Uh, hold up. Mm. Okay, never mind. Forget that first value. Photoshop 5.96 megabytes, Krita 6.67. So Photoshop has better compression apparently, and the quality should be indistinguishable. It's one of the reasons I still use Photoshop is they have better uh, image compression, and when you're working with thousands of images and limited hard drive space, it's kind of a thing. <laughs> so I have to stick with Photoshop. All right, so for that, we have the Dragoon, PNG, and TIF. We have, I might show you all this this image in particular. Is this the one? 
might not be this one. Yeah, I don't think it's this one. If I find the right one, I'll, I'll come back to it. But uh, so we're gonna do the Lavitz Dragoon and. Got the Photoshop one for now. The 5.96. Those are the same. Okay, so this this could be deleted. Get those three. And oops. Oh yeah, I disabled the 3D objects folder, but I can't get rid of it. Uh, okay, we got Lavitz, Lavitz Transparent. We have Lavis 2, 2 transparent, the posters, and then these will these will be like somewhat segmented into subfolders like characters, uh, wallpaper looking things, that, that sort of thing. That is the original. Okay, so we'll get all of these over. We got rows. All three of these, all of these. So all of these are fine to copy over. And that's all of these renders. So what I'm gonna do is renders. That in there, and then we'll do concept art and other things. Now, some of this stuff, um, so there's there's the term promotional images. It can include a lot of things sort of nebulously. Um, renders can count as promo images. I mean, they're put on the press disc after all, so it's promotional material. Um, concept art is a little more of a gray area, I think. So for the reason I bring this up is we already have a promo page on the website. I have two distinct pages on LD.org, which is the merch page and the promos page. The merchandise page is the page for LD stuff that was meant to be sold to the public. The game itself, the JP guidebook, the other types of strategy guides, the soundtrack, the things that are for sale. And then promos is just all kinds of different promotional materials. Um, which can be artwork, but I have a whole lot of other stuff on there, um, like these like paper or cardboard standees that would sit in the shops, um, physical posters, and commercials and all the different things. I can probably just add in a section for this artwork as well, so I can either do that or link it to the other page, I'm not sure. I will figure it out. Now, wallpapers, wallpapers is hard for me because a long time ago, uh, I, I knew of various wallpapers for LOD. Wallpaper being, uh, you know, this was some old website, Ecranjo, I can't pronounce that, dot free to fr, it's a French fan site or website uploader thing, and uh, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's like officially made or if it's fan made or if it's like fan on top of official did they just you know take the art from the press kit and do it themselves or did Sony issue it that way so I'm gonna have to do some digging on some of these to determine that but there was a set apparently from this the same website here in the corner oh my camera's blocking it <laughs> whoops um, yeah I'll, I'll find a way to... It's right there, that, that website. Which probably doesn't exist anymore, but I can check it out on archive.org and see if it was just like a big wallpaper site or something. Uh, this one... This, this one's gotta be official because this is one of the only shots we have of any FMV that is in high quality. Uh, the FMVs on disc are really low res, this is obviously a render from Sony. So I need to know where this came from. I have not seen it in any press kits and I've looked at so many different press kits. Um, I'll show you all actually the, the press kit layout so you can see what this kind of stuff uh, 
looks like when I when you when you first find it when I first found it. Um, you know what? I should use like Google Lens to see if I can find the source of this image. The problem is uh, a lot of people will have like this version of it, not like the original. But supposedly Google Lens has a find source image thing, which tries to find the oldest version of a picture. Sometimes it works, uh, but the less popular something is, the smaller footprint it has, the less likely you're going to find that kind of information. Or it might have the wrong dates. So you always got to be careful with things like the Google Lens search. This one, sometimes it's obvious. This one is an actual image from, from a press kit, so I, I know about that. Um, this one looks like it was from Sony, but it also looks pretty pixelated or artifacted or scanned or something. Um, so I don't know if this was like a poster that got scanned or what, but um, I'll have to dig into some of these. This is another bad picture quality version of the other one. Dart. There was a whole set of these. Yeah, Game Wallpapers had, had some of these. And this one, I still gotta look into what, what the hell this came from. This one's actually really cool, because if you look closely, um, the Divine Dragon is here in uh, darkened color, with uh, black skin and uh, just all red. Very dark version. Which I'm not sure if that's actually the... Uh... Is it the same one? This could be the same image. It might be the same image. Yeah, it might be. That might be the same image of the Divine Dragon. Well, no, it's using this old version of the eye. This version of the eye is in the JP guidebook. So I'm really curious what's going on there. Anyway, so there's all kinds of little mysteries like this. Uh, we have this image in higher quality. So some of these I might I might just omit these for now until I see which ones I have the source of. This this could be a render, a render snapshot. Hmm. All right, I'll have to look into this folder later. We'll skip this for now. Um, I'm gonna quickly hop over to. Let's see, I'll do a new one of these. And we'll do Video Game Archivism by Vent, E3 2000. So this is, um, on the left hand of my screen, um, a press kit uh, with just the folder structure, not, not like the ISO of the disk. Um, so it's just the file structure. The ISO is included here as well, but uh, what is a press kit? So a press kit is when a, um, a company like Sony uh, it could be a big platform like Sony or just an individual developer uh, hands out uh, and says uh, these are the images I want included on your on your press disk um, you know uh, I don't know who organized that exactly but many of these are for E3 uh, Electronic Entertainment Expo so apparently someone did all of that wrangling and like had knowledge of who was going to have a booth. Sony was going to have a booth, Konami was going to have a booth, whoever else was going to have a booth at the expo. And some of them uh, opted in to provide assets for upcoming stuff, because promotions. And then, uh, for a time it was mostly just like news journalists would go there to get these discs. They get the pass, they get the discs. They take the disc back to, you know, IGN or whatever website they represent and they would have a collection of art assets they could use in their in their news articles saying uh, Banjo-Kazooie is coming out, here's a big picture of Banjo if that was provided by the developer. So that's the idea, uh, the loose off-the-cuff explanation. Now when I go into the PlayStation folder, uh, let's say I, I choose hardware. Um, I open a hardware EPS file. Sometimes they're in file formats that we don't really recognize anymore. 
um, the general public. I don't want to open it in this. I want to. Uh, my Illustrator trial is over, so that's not going to do any good. Yeah, it's even crashing, so we'll. Oh, it is trying to open. It shouldn't open. Yeah, it's. Here comes the big paywall. Yeah, I'm not doing this. Oh, well, it did show the file. Uh, whatever. Um, open with. Choose another app, and we'll do this. Always use that. Okay. So, um, I've got this. IR fan view thing that can show you the images as well. So they would include images of the hardware. Here's the PlayStation. Uh, Sony would provide this themselves. Uh, various logos. So what's H4? That is the, uh, the PlayStation logo. It's pretty darn cool to have that in high res. And part of the idea behind it is just so that um, to make sure whatever you're creating or offering to the public is represented well. Um, whether it's well ahead of time with a preview or on launch, whatever the case may be. Uh, we're actually developing uh, a press kit for Severed Chains because um, I learned uh, when PC Gamer covered us, a lot of other little articles, news news outlets covered us, and they sometimes used either no images or bad images that weren't even from Severed Chains, which could make the pro project look worse than it really is. So we don't want that. So the press kit uh, is gonna be there to let news outlets know in the future, these are the images we want you to use for when you cover us in your articles. Uh, so I will be building that for us. Uh, I've already started building it, but it's not live on the website yet. We're still getting some things together, but uh, it's, a, it's an official, formal, short little page that says the info we want journalists to know strictly what Sever Chains is, what what our claims are, any images we supply, that kind of thing. So that's the press kit. Ah oh, yes, read first. What did they want us to know in 1999? PlayStation logo S1. So they would have this documentation just about the logo itself. Um, and what is considered like appropriate or not for when you use the logo. Um, many companies do this, so it's not strange or, or bad. It just can be kind of surprising um, what all these expectations are and the restrictions are. Um, yeah, this is some really old way of describing some of this stuff. So anyway, uh, they also had images of their peripherals, like the multi-tap. You can see how inconsistent they were with the file format, like, here is a S-video picture in EPS format, the multi-tap is a JPEG, and then link cable and RFU, which is an RF unit I'm guessing, are in TIF format, and like, there's just so, so unnecessary to have so many different formats, like there was no standardization. There must, there must have been some, but everyone gave different formats and it all was just like, here's a grab bag of different files. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's an archivist's life for me. And we'll go into the software now and you can see, uh, for E3 2000 artwork disc, this was a separate disc from the regular E3 press disc, I guess. There are some, uh, sports games, Grind Session, Medieval 2, Legend of Dragon. So, um... Yeah, just for comparison, we'll look at some of the other games really quick. So here's the Aladdin logo, uh, Aladdin in Nasira's Revenge, and screens. Sometimes screenshots were not screenshots, they were actually like FMV snapshots and things. Uh, again, it's very inconsistent, but here's a couple small screenshots of Aladdin there. Not very much here. Cool borders. Their logo was in JPEG format. That's a pretty slick Cool Borders logo. And this is also useful for things like uh, emulators or um, stuff like emulators that, that help you put all your games together and you have like custom box art displays and whatever. Uh, use this stuff when you can. Because sometimes those uh, databases might just have like old scans and doesn't look as good. You can have the clean images if they were provided through these press kits. 
Crash Bash. We've been talking about Crash Bash in the Discord server lately. These are all TIFs. Um, why won't you let Photo Viewer open it? Oh, whatever. Here's a screenshot of Crash Bash. I want us to have some mini games like this in separate chains, so I'll be advocating for that at some point. But yeah, um, so those are some examples of that. There should be some that have more stuff. Ah, yes, box art. So grind session box art looks pretty good. Kind of, I kind of hate that they're in JPEG though, because JPEG is is just not great for preservation of digital images. But they've got a logo here. Here's the grind session logo. Some of you might know some of these games. And then we go to Legend of Dragoon. And they were like, actually, we're not going to give you a JPEG, we're not going to give you a TIF file, we're not going to give you an EPS, we're going to give you a whole ass Photoshop document. So for those of you who don't know yet, I, uh, I unveiled this last year. Uh, these are some good tangents. So this is 99.99% anywhere you go to look for LED box art, you're going to find a scan, which has, you know, you can tell it's a scan because it's kind of grainy and whatever. This is the raw, uh, this is the image that they sent out in a press kit, of all things. Now, it's not all the different, like, layers of Dart and Shauna and the Moon, unfortunately, but they do still have a few layers. For example, rating pending, rating T for Teen. And you can get rid of the template to reveal additional art never before seen. So if you haven't seen that before, congratulations, you now have seen more of Dart's shoulder which is normally obscured by the uh, PlayStation titling on the side there. So you get more of Dart on the side, you get a little more on the bottom and the top and by Rose over there. Just that much more, it's just significant enough to be worth it. So this, this will probably also be going on the website. Um, I wish I could take all of the instances of web pages and, and game databases that have like an image scan of this and just forcibly replace all of those files with this file. That is what I would like to do as an archivist. I don't have that kind of power, but um, hopefully with enough uh, word spread, then whenever possible, we can replace those box art scans with raw, um, pure digital imagery where we can make it look even better. Alright, so going back, they had the logo as well. If you want the Legend of Dragoon logo in high res, this is it. So for example, it has a white or black background option. The white lets you see there's also a shadow layer here. And you can also go for transparency. Transparency with the shadow, transparency without the shadow if you want it to just be flat instead. Doesn't look as good on white, but it looks good on black. And on white, you can see the, the difference the shadow makes. In addition to that, the shadow is not just a vague shadow, it's a detailed shadow. Look at this. Like, it's a little blurry, but it looks pretty cool, in my opinion, to have this, like, sort of inverted uh, image. And for whatever reason, they provided the trademark in both gold and black. And technically that doesn't matter anymore because the trademark expired uh, a while ago. This has been over a year now, I think. I think it was like November 2022 was the deadline or something. It was on my blog. I did a blog about it. Uh, they let the trademark lapse in North America, but not Japan. So whatever. So... In some rare cases, we are fortunate enough to have very high res, uh, in terms of the pixel count, uh, images of the box art, the logo, and certain scenes, which uh, we'll also be looking at. Um, which can be used for modern wallpapers that don't look blurry today. Like, they had this stuff future-proofed. If only they had given us more of them. Um, and speaking of which, I believe I already gave us a wallpaper pack on the website, so... 
Did I actually provide it? Yep. If you want a set of 16 wallpapers, head over to our website right now and go get them. They're all in 1920 by 1080 for now. We'll do more later. Um, but these are sampled from some of the uh, higher res images that we've got available through the press kits and things like that. Um, so you can set that on like a slideshow rotation or just pick one. You can set one for monitor A and one for monitor B, at least if you're on Windows, that should be possible. So there you go. Now getting back, uh, we don't need Aladdin. And we don't need that. And we'll back out. They have a few screenshots. So this this artwork disc, this is the artwork disc. So there's, there's, there's like a, in this case, there was a main disc and there was an artwork disc. The artwork disc has almost nothing on it for LOD. It's it's stupid. There's four screenshots, which uh, if I go to open with, will it actually... I've got the legacy photo viewer, I guess that works. So you can hardly even see these things. Uh, they're very pixelated. Pretty bad shots, there's only a few of them. Why is this the artwork disc? Because... Because, 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 um, if you look at the Sony press CD, um, this is Sony stuff specifically. They also have Legend of Dragon here. This is not the artwork disc, but here's an artwork folder with so many subfolders of so many characters. Here's all those big ones that we were looking at before. Here's Rose, Shauna. The dragon, the dragoon, the big poster. Why wasn't this on the artwork disc? You know? Anyone who got the artwork disc but not the Sony disc missed out on all of this and therefore couldn't represent LOD as well for their new site. It's so aggravating. They got these low res images too, which is the four images, uh, uh, the two images I showed before. I don't know why there's only two in this. CD, but whatever. And they had a whole bunch of sketches. All of these sketches. Uh, half of them are just duplicated because I made PNGs of them, but... All of these sketches. And this was never, like, shared or reported on. I have not found these shared on any website. It's terrible, like... We should have known about the Parasite Dragon. It's That's what it says in the corner here. That says Parasite Dragon. We could have known about that for 25 years, but we didn't because it was hiding on this disc. And we didn't, we were 11 years old, we weren't going to E3, you know. Uh, it's a shame. So, I like, I like, one of my favorite concepts in sci fi is things that get infested. So, an infested dragon like this is beyond interesting to me. Look at this face. Look at that face. I love this face. That is a just raw scream because this whatever is infesting it. That is... The closest thing we have to that is like that man-eating bud or whatever. Jeez. Is, look at how cool this is. And ironically, this is the most normal looking dragon of Legend of Dragoon. Like, all the other ones are, you know, words to be an empowered praying mantis or an empowered looking beetle or a spaceship. And this looks like a regular dragon by comparison. So, this might have been when they were going for a different art style, maybe. But why were they even considering a parasite dragon? Like, what was the story behind this, if any? It's just things you wish you knew. So yeah, on the non-artwork disc is all the artwork. Uh, so in terms of renders, I'm pretty sure I got everything from there. Um, and they have FMVs still. But that's a mistake because FMVs, full motion videos, are a specific thing. They're not in-game footage, they're the uh, pre-rendered stuff, um, the, the full motion videos. This is just in-game battle content, not FMV still, so this was a mistake. Either they had FMV stills to give us, or this should have been called screenshots. It's Dart doing uh, D-Attack, 
Rose finishing one of her Dragoon magics, maybe. And then Rose running up toward Mappy in, in that cutscene. Not FMV stills. Here's the logo in a smaller version. Created in May, a few weeks before the game came out in North America. And then screens, these are actual screens. Screenshots from the game. All these different screenshots. And then text was the pre-release information where they confirmed that uh, the three main characters are Dart Rose and Shauna, I think. This is actually for Europe for some reason. Oh, Dart's not even in this one, never mind. This this is a different press release. I'll have to find the other one. So yeah, th these kind of things would also be um, quoted for news outlets as well. Um, they issue a press release, the press can then quote some or all of that or link back to the original release. And that's that disc. Now that's most of that stuff. There's another one for Crash Bash here. And that's the other thing, is you gotta compare and contrast, like, get get your artwork disc, get your Sony disc, and get the other press discs. Because they might, multiple, have, have, like, different sets of assets on them for the same game. So, like, for Crash Bash, this logo wasn't in the other set. Look at this beautiful logo art for Crash Bash. I'm not even sure if that's the final one or if it changed. I, I don't remember what the logo is supposed to look like. You know, uh, let's let's take a look. Crash Bash logo art. That's probably from the press kit right there. Yeah. Crash Bash. What if I type box art? Okay, so you can see the box art changed a little bit. The stars are kind of uh, blacked out here, but they're metallic in here. About the same dispersion of them. And the, the outer ring is metal. So that's a different design than the official box art, apparently. Yeah, here's, here's a higher res one, apparently. That's definitely different. I kind of like the cost this uh, this this red one more. I like this more, I think. Hey, Arrow Team. The music is a collection uh, approved by fan musicians Lloyd Sorrow, JP Soundworks, and Tessa Nael. It's a whole bunch of tracks. Is that real or did someone designed? That's that's kind of weird. Crash Bash Live. I'm not sure what that's about. Okay. Formerly Project Nitro. Oh, is it maybe like a reverse engineering thing? Maybe. I wonder. I just kind of stumbled upon that. Anyway, um, going back. Let's find some more renders. Now, some of my stuff is missing. I gotta fix that. Images. What all do I have in here? I've got Dragoon Dart, Dragoon Rose, Dragoon Lavitz. This one... Oh, this is good. Look at this. Look at how detailed this is. Look at this. You can see the Dragoon gem right there. His face is all serious. When I was a kid, I uh, took a like a crop of his face and did the whole like color inversion thing as my profile picture on an old LED forum. It was great. 
You can see all the, the veins and the wings and stuff. It was great. Great, great, great. And then there's another version, which is the same image, but with the uh, like the particle magic effects they put in behind for Lavitz, Dart, Rose, and maybe Shauna. It's a whole thing. Very well made. So I don't know what's up with those. Why do I have a third one? Oh yeah. Cause the uh, the alpha mask is not great, so I had to fix it. Like his his hair gets cut off. If you can see that, the hair <laughs> that's a mistake. <clears throat> And in one of the images I was mentioning from before, there's there's some weird stuff going on, but I didn't find it yet. Somewhere around, there's a file where you can actually just... There's a layer that just shows his hand and his, like, lower arm and the weapon by itself. I don't know why that's separated out, but I was able to make an image of it, so there you go. That's a clean cut of just the hand and the spear. <laughs> <coughs> With an alien laser gun? I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool. I had a set of images from the Gaming Intelligence Agency. Yeah, I know that one's real. Um, this, this really intrigues me because I'm like, where did this come from? Why do I say, where did this come from? Because, number one, this this is Goofdis. Okay, let me show you the rabbit holes that we go through. Uh, that I go through, at least. Goofdis. So, we had the, uh, the sketches. Did I not rename these? Yeah. So, there's Goofdis. This right here comes from this. That makes sense, right? But interestingly, there's another image on top of this. You can see there's another image on top of this. That little bit might be another image. And there's some... There's something here. Some kind of script or text. I don't know what this is from. That looks like Japanese script of some kind. That little silhouette in white. And what is this image of? So I kind of want to, you know, I don't even think I ever checked this. Yeah, goofed us. That's, that's pretty clever. So what I want to do now, I just thought of it, is translate. I don't think I ever checked what this text is, or I did and it just didn't uh, end up being high quality enough. I mean, it's very pixelated, but let's see if we can get a name on that. Medicine Beast? Medicinal Beast? It might be Medicinal Beast, that upper... whatever that is. It might be another kind of beast. It might be a bad translation, but there's some kind of beast, I'm guessing. And I don't recognize the art from that piece alone, which would prove that there's more art that existed. I mean, surely we didn't get all the concept art, but... This is some proof of it, I think. Yeah, all of these were stamped with the Gaming Intelligence Agency logo here. That's an FMV still. That looks kind of high res. You can even see Rose's face there. I think this is... This is a higher res image than you can find in the game. Yeah. We know about that image. Interestingly, so the, the Divine Tree is, is also interesting because we... Um, I haven't found an image of just that by itself. Just this wallpaper. Okay, that's Cadessa. That's a Cadessa screenshot. Fine. Uh, Michael. That, that looks kind of high-res compared to the in-game file. Not entirely sure. 
See, what does that say? Everything? The problem with the problem with kanji is like the word the 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 word that it is can look very different if you don't have all the characters. So when you have separate letters and you combine them and it completely transforms what it says. So that could say anything. Dart, Shauna, Rose, and back to that. So I'm gonna have to dig into these images as well. Um where was I? Okay. I was in the images looking for renders. This is a screenshot from the the blue box toys thing, I think. The action figures, some old concepts. Fairbrand, these should be in the GIA area. Gotta figure out which book these are from too, because I don't really recognize this. Could be a random Famitsu book. There's so many of those. Nothing too special here. Oh, I did this um, concept, just very basic concept of uh, like tilting the logo and things to fit it on a PS5. So Lloyd was on this one, and then I also put Rose on, just as the uh, idea of like a LOD themed PlayStation 5. Yeah, there's a lot that didn't make it into the game. Um, that's that's pretty much any video game. There's lots of stuff that doesn't make it in for whatever reason, usually for good reason. But uh, it always makes you wonder what else was there. Let's see. Unsorted. Maybe I got some renders and unsorted. And all these that are just sitting here. This mysterious wingly image, which is only in this size, which is super pixelated. Have not found a source for this yet. Uh, it's on like one or two websites, like fan sites that have art, and they'll be missing a bunch. But they have this rare one for some reason. I'm like, why do you have that? And was this official or fan art? You know, it's hard to verify a lot of these because it's just there's no way to find the source anymore. The websites are gone or whatever. It's uh, it's a whole thing. There's a picture of Ruff. We love Ruff. Um, I don't even remember where I got this. This is an FMV still in really nice quality of the Divine Dragon Eye. Look at all the reflection they have in there. It's nuts. And they said in an interview, I think, that they were brand new to smoke and that it was a big challenge for them in the game. So putting all the smoke around the Divine Dragon must have been really hard for them. Yeah, Spino is great. Got Lulu here. And for those that don't remember, um, or weren't here for it, I confirmed that this is a Giganto through Google Translate. We've got the Giganto uh, looking like a tribes person, and then we got the two Minintos after that. So this first Minento is Pelpy, the one that gets scammed by the street vendor. And then the um, shorter Minento here, um, barely shorter, is the ones that do the find the bird in the hat game in Lohan. Death Frontier. Why is this a JPEG? I don't know. But I'm gonna dive into the unsorted area. Oh my gosh. Why do I have so many PSDs in here? Box art small. Okay. Yeah, some of these I just need to keep an unknown stack. Let's see what do we got here. Phone card picture, poster. Ah, uh, yes. I need to find a higher res version of this. The uh, movie theater poster styling. 
There are multiple versions of that. High res rose. This is one of the originals. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is something I made a long time ago, back when I had started the LOD petition and we were getting like a thousand signatures a day for the 20th anniversary and it hit over 9,000 so I had to do a 9,000 reference even though it was kind of dated at the time. That was a thing. Um, let's see. Oh, for those who don't know, you might as well see this while you're here. Uh, this is... This is weird. There's this whole image of Dart in a whole different, like, visual style almost. The the dragoon armor is different. The wings are about the same, but the, the torso is different. His face is different. And his sword is like a laser sword. <laughs> because of course it is. Uh, now, obviously this, this is some next level looking stuff, but... It's, it can't be for the proposed sequel because, A, this is the Black Castle of Kazass. Um, I, I guess it could be in the future, but B, the sequel was actually a prequel as confirmed in an interview. So it wasn't the future, it was the past. So this must have been just an alternate representation of present day in my opinion. There's another mystery dragoon down here, we don't know who that is. This one right here. He's got the giant pauldrons. Uh, and I was comparing the look of the uh, in-game Black Castle to the artwork here. Uh, this is from a CG World article. And how uh, things looked kind of different, but they're almost identical otherwise. It might it might be just about identical. It's, it's hard to tell. But anyway, so that's the thing. And for all the people who uh, talk about the they do the the Lavitz and Dart bromance thing, I shook it up a bit and made a meme a while ago uh, and changed it because to me it's not about Dart noticing Lavitz and leaving Shauna. It's about Lavitz noticing Dart and leaving Albert because they were originally together, in my opinion. Uh, you know, they're, they're two different flowers and everything, and Lavitz trained him, and, and uh, you know, they both are working together to help keep Basil in order. So, uh, so this is the real one, in my opinion. For a nostalgic feel, this is the um, controls screen. It's so bad. This is the controls screen when you start the demo. It is so, so bad. They had to create this, like, text legend of M is menu, W is world map, S is sub map, which is the locations you walk around on, B is battle. And in all of them, circle is cancel, but in world map and sub map, circle is dash, and in battle, it's counterattack guard. And just, this, this, no kid gave a crap about it. This was not understandable to kids. No way. Uh, could make the text 30 instead of 24 size. Uh, yeah, Doom, we, we, we sort of knew it was official already, but this does cement it on, on the outside, yes. That, uh, they're they're called sub maps. Addition attack, repetitive hitting item. What kind of translation is repetitive hitting item? Repetitive obviously it's multi magic, but you know, it just uh repetitive hitting item. That is a bad translation. Um let's see. Oh, Dennis Martin had uh, released this image of uh, official sh sheet music. 
Proof that, if you still believe, used to be called Fall from the Sky. There's Dennis Martin's name right there. Who knows what else is in this folder. And, uh, images... Uh, that might be Fletz. I feel like that's... Fletz. Um... So we gotta get a hold of those at some point, next time he's willing to reply. There's a Parasite Dragon. Uh, I took a screenshot of the mural at some point, for some reason. The uh, unused icons in the game. Some of these are used, but so like after the sword, there's an axe, a hammer, a spear, a bow, like a mace, um, a knuckle weapon, like brass knuckles, a gauntlet, uh, just a regular shirt, and all of this was gutted. Um, it's still in the game, but it wasn't used. And we have the ability now to bring those back in, um, so we'll be doing that with Ever Chains. All these, all these different items that, that... Like, there's literally an icon for bombs. What was gonna be a bomb? That can't be the Psych Bomb, because these, these are more physical, like, Drake bombs. It's a whole thing. Uh, concept Art of Congo. I have a higher res of that somewhere, I think. Um, let's see... What else do we got in here? Oh yeah, this is one of those standees that could sit in, like, a GameStop or whatever. Yeah, Zelda Bomb, sure. <laughs> now, if y'all have uh, questions that aren't about this, go ahead and ask anyway, and I'll, I'll answer. Uh, it doesn't have to be all on topic. Just a chill stream. Um, this was a map of something... CG world images. Now here's another thing I need to to state about um, renders. So so let's let's clarify. This image of Rose in regular and dragon form and Dart here. Now the the original like 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 digital images of those are classed as renders, right? But this is a um, this is a scan of a magazine page, so I wouldn't call that a true render. It's a ren it's a rendered image, but this is only a scan, so it's not like the you know the full quality. Uh, so that is the distinction I make when I'm archiving things: is I specify whether it's a magazine scan or if it's like an original. Um, so that that is an important distinction. Because that really affects the quality. Um, we've got a few renders of Miranda, but like the only known source of those is the Japanese guidebook. So it looks better than, say, just her 3D model in game, which is really, you know, blocky. Um, but it's going to be grainy compared to the, the, the raw digital images that we have of the other characters. Um, so here's some constant art of Danton. This is a render, that's a render, that's a render. And concept art down here, if you never saw my CG World uh, article on the website, I uh, scanned in the images and shared some of it. Uh, there was different appearances for Maru, Kongol, um, Dart, and Rose. Now, in an interview, Rose was uh, said to have green hair, I think it was, if my memory is correct. And this isn't quite green, it's sort of a blonde. So there were apparently multiple iterations they went through before they settled. Um, the rape here looks similar, uh, the hair is still pretty big. And you notice in this, this version, this version has to be pretty old because they don't have the Dragoon Stones. But in this version, they do. So it stands to reason that these two images are more recent than these two images. Dart almost looked like... Uh, I don't even know what celebrity I would, I would use for this. Um... But they did have the wing design figured out from, from an early stage, that's for sure. And Rose's shoulders didn't change much, I don't think. 
The arms didn't change much, but the torsos, the upper torsos changed. Dart's sword is like barely drawn here at all. It's like a sketch. Then here he's got this this whole other design that we do not see in the game. Uh, I would love to find this in the files, huh? And unfortunately, because, you know, magazines just layer stuff on top of each other, regular Dart's sword is just slashing right through this concept art, making it an imperfect picture. Uh, this is a final render of Maru, and this is an older version of Maru's Dragoon form. Again, the wings are already figured out. The hammer does... I think I think there's a standalone render of this hammer in scan form that looks almost exactly like this. So I think that hammer was already finalized at that point. And Congo looks pretty similar. So yeah. This was a whole treasure for me to find because you can see like here's the texture maps before they're wrapped around a 3d object and the, the material selectors they were using and that's how they get just the torso right there it's amazing and here's the commander in like a wireframe basically and they had shots down along the side here FMV shots. Here's like the actual wireframe of the commander. This is the scene where the commander is talking to the uh, Knights of Sandora and whatever. You can see over the top view here, one of them is holding uh, a torch, I'm guessing. And all the different knights. There's a lot of people in this scene. Like, when you're looking at it from a design perspective, there's a lot of people in this scene. Yep, here they're approaching. There's the torch knight. Oh, and part of the other reason this is a treasure is because they happen to include not just the uh, uh, FMV stills, but these sketches. This is a sketch of um, <clears throat> uh, the Cadessa flashback. And, uh, gosh, it's kind of hard to make some of these out. But there's supposedly some Virage stuff going on here. Yep, there's Kansas on the Super. But before that... Um, it's kind of hard to make some of these out. We don't see that much detail when, when they're looking down, down through the city layers to the bottom like that. They're, that's kind of wild, actually. Kansas gonna explode. So this is what it looked like in just the storyboarding. This is regular FMV stills. This is a scene with Melbu, who is not fully textured yet. Just looks kind of like a green blob. About to get stabbed. That part's still for the other thing. And I don't know what all these white boxes are over the front of the screen, but that's apparently a thing. More storyboards. Here's Rose looking on as Zeke falls down with Melbu. But here the two could be kissing for all we know. Look at him. They're just having a precious moment, and she's like, Oh, I can't believe you! Hmm, <laughs> <coughs> sorry. The destruction of... Cadessa, the Vraja flying all around... Uh, is this... Michael? Maybe that's Michael? I'm not sure. They're falling down into the Signet Sphere. They even have like an arrow to show they're gonna fall down there. Wait a minute. 
Hang on, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What the, what, what's going on here? If these are in order, if these are in order, this might be an earlier version of the FMV. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. Um, okay, so this, this is a different scene. It's separated by this little thing here. So we got Rose watching Zeke and Mobu fall into the Signet Sphere. That's the Signet Sphere right there. That's a better shot of the Signet Sphere. Oh! Wait, no, no, no. I know what this is. I thought this was like Rose going in to try and save Zeig, but it might be an earlier version, an earlier scene. 7 of 15, 8 of 15. Okay. Okay, never mind, never mind. This is just Zeig going to charge up at Melbu. My bad. And then he stabs Melbu. Okay. So 7 of 15, 8 of 15, 6 of 15. These are out of order. That's. Why are these out of order? <laughs> Don't do that to me! Come on, magazine. There's five, so it's five, six, eight, seven. That's not fair. I can't believe I got fooled. That almost looked like Rose to me. <laughs> Whoopsie. All right. Anyway, moving on. Now these are uh, the in between. So you've seen the, the, you know, here's the final FMV stills, and you see you've seen the storyboards, which are just like sketches. Now you've got like the colored sketches, the divine tree coming out of the ground, planting his roots. Now we know what those numbers mean. So two comes before three. This is a depiction of Soa, which looks like Jesus, I guess. fruits growing and then the finals on the side there we never really get a good shot of that like circular mural or whatever or this thing I would love a high-res image of that and then they show what this looked like as a 3D model and all the instructions they gave it to to grow the way it did oh yeah they mentioned SIGGRAPH here I want to translate that real quick get them <laughs> great job Ninchi yep to all you uh, young kids who are watching right now Legend of Dragoon is the best that's all you need to know Okay, let's translate this. Uh, we'll go long ways. Oh yes, yep, this confirms they won a prize at the SIGGRAPH convention in 1999. That's, that's right. Um, so, one of the first places LOD was shown at, at a major place was not E3, but SIGGRAPH. SIGGRAPH is not just about games, it's just general art and animation technology, just showing off uh, the latest things that are possible that people have been creating, tech demos, scenes, uh, uh, sh uh, short films that are like 10 minutes long, you know, stuff like that. Um, but a lot of it was games. And uh, LOD was there, and we're like, here's the Divine Tree scene. And they got an award. Um, the Divine Tree is uh, even shown in the uh, SIGGRAPH magazine catalog that I managed to get a copy of, where the, some of the most obscure ways to find exclusive lore knowledge. Only in the SIGGRAPH catalog does it state the height of the Divine Tree, which is like some thousand meters or something like that. You have to go to the end of the earth to find extra information about a game you like. Oh yeah, and they had some more uh, sketches here. Let's look at these. Let's see what these look like. Now, I know it's low quality, just bear with me. So it's showing Cadessa getting destroyed. In the final battle. And there's just 15 scenes, 9, 10, so this is right after that. I guess that's a Virage. 
And it goes to the scene we know where Belzac is impaled by that claw. Just the claw, and then uh, the arm, and then there's the Raja's face, and Shirley there. And you can see some of the annotations. Uh, this says zoom out. For whatever reason, some of it's in English. We'll have to see if we can translate the other stuff. But this is a, uh, a two-slide long and extended outward sketch to show the detail of... Um, the uh the like the the vambrises i guess of the dragoon armor where it's got like three sections it's got the main section and then these like curved in sections to wrap around your elbow and the detail of the claw is just incredible and his face look at this face that is pain look at that so much pain and then Surely looking on, noticing the Virage. Look at how detailed the sketch is. Like the inside the eyeball, they've got this like in a circle. That's so detailed for a sketch. God, I'm I'm a very basic sketch artist. Come on. And they've got like a process explanation here for how the eye. Oh, I wish this was legible. Oh my god, this is probably explaining what the eye is doing. Oh, I'll never know what it says. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, we're in a, we're in a tangent here, um, but it's still fun. So Shirley's holding out the bow. The arrow's pointing upward because it's not the arrow of the bow. It's it's an arrow saying the bow is rising up in the scene. So the arrow's rising up. The rocks are starting to. Get all wacky. Raj is charging up. Shirley fires, and that's it. So that 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 checks out. That's how the FMV plays out. Ooh, and we get some. Ooh, look at these. I haven't looked at these in a while, so I'm just kind of drooling all over again. Look at this stuff. Magical Moonchild Detection Stone. I am so off track, but I don't care. This is tangentially related. All, all of this stuff, I, I hope to archive this stuff as well. So this is Zeke on... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is different. This looks different. Zeke at the end of the FMV is in his normal armor because Mobu deactivated the dragoon form and 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 put himself in there and petrified Zeke. But here Zeke is shown in dragoon form on the floor. Unless that's Rose, but I'm pretty sure that's like a floor. That's got to be Zeke. And a sword? That's, that's Rose. Gonna break through, reach out. He's still in Dragoon form! We have a change! We found a change in the FMV! Wow, why did I not see this before? Holy shit! I'm sorry, kids. Sorry, Ninchi. <laughs> ah, oh gosh, um... Oh my god. Zeke is in Dragoon form at the end of the FMV. He's a Dragoon. It's proven right here. That is the Dragoon Vambrace. No question about it. What? He... How was it gonna... Did they just not know at the time that he would need to be untransformed? And they had to fix it? Or were they planning a different outcome where he just died and didn't come back, maybe? <sighs> Sorry, Pony Pro. Ah, uh, he's still in Dragoon form! What? Um, my, my brain... Is restarting just ah, ba -ba 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 
He's still in Dragoon form. I... He's still in freaking Dragoon form. Thanks, Look at Dime, I appreciate it. Jesus. He's... That's... Like, why does that one look so normal looking and Rose is, like, got some kind of artifact going on with her arm? I guess it's just not finalized or I don't know. He's in Dragoon form! What? Yeah, those those are like wing outlines. That's That's Dragoon form. You can you can tell with the wing the the wing lines and the, the text What does that even say? Like is that even translatable? Like I'll ask Char for help, but um, for now Is petrified or sleeping? There's still a bit of mystery to be had. Come on. Z is... Z is... Something about petrification. The egg still has a little light? The dragoon? I maybe Oh, we have got to get these notes translated. They could add so much information. All right, anyway. Here's some more art stuff. Uh god. And randomly the explosion at the end. <laughs> okay. God, what I how many millions of dollars I would pay just to have access to that 3D scene of of the of the divine tree exploding. The legend of drag. Oh my god. <laughs> I I my heart. Uh anyway, Oh, here's my, my Shuhei peekaboo image that I use in some of the image thumbnails for our, our videos and things. I use a modified version of that. Um, now this this is an interesting one to try and get back on topic here. Uh, this this is a mystery to me. I need to figure out where I got this. Because a lot of this stuff, when I got it, I wasn't thinking of documenting where I got it from at the time. Unfortunately, so now I have to go back and figure out where I got things from. I wish I had done this from day one, but I kind of accidentally became an archivist, so forgive me. This looks really high quality, and I'm 99.9% sure Sherbert. I am 99% Sherbert that this is a like un, an unmodified image, but I don't understand how or why. Like obviously, Sony could make high-res renders of the FMVs, but most of the ones we have are not 1080p. This is a strict 1080p image. 1920 by 1080p. And I don't know where I got it from. So I have to figure that out. But temporarily, I am going to add this to the renders list. Because <clears throat> it looks like an unmodified render. I will double check it before it goes on the site. Also this, this Lloyd stuff. I think there's another press kit I forgot to check. Which has this stuff. I think it's like a... Is it a European disc? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the press kit The press kit of LOD. There's an LOD press kit. So so there's the other thing. Um, we're a press disc. It's The language is interchangeable, sort of. So, so the press discs I was talking about before is the stuff you would see at like Electronic Entertainment Expo or other events where they provide a set of images and text data about a game or whatever to like news journalists primarily. And then they use that official info to represent the product well, automatically. Um, there's also press versions of games that are given to people. So instead of just getting, here's like a E3 press disc with different games on it. Um, there could also be a press disc of a specific game, which is here's a copy of the game with a bonus disc. 
and and that also has stuff on it and that's where things like this Lloyd image came from um, so this this is a super high-res image of Lloyd now it kind of looks like his eyes are missing they're just kind of underneath the cap there he does have eyes <clears throat> And you can tell, like, he's actually wearing clothes underneath this. His, his um, like, choker is there. And his clothing is visible here. Uh... Yeah, this 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 uh, pendant here is actually the same design as down lower on his armor. I never no noticed that before. And he's probably... I want to say that's the Moonchild Detection Orb not the moon gem because the moon gem looks really different in game and there are inconsistencies between in-game and fmv footage and stuff but i'm gonna say that's probably the detection orb oh yes and his, his fancy shoes fancy fancy shoes so lloyd is that's a render and that is that the same rose image? I don't think... So it's still a 1200 by 1600. TIF is 3.25 megabytes. 3.52... No. 3.07 megabytes. There's a discrepancy here. So we're going to include both. When there's a discrepancy in file size from two different sources, you include both. Oops. I don't know what that did. Um... I just made a copy of the files, apparently. Two, three, four. All of these move over. Getting a growing list here. 40 images. There, Some of them are copies because they're in PNG format, but yeah. Um, I have to figure out where I got these from. Maybe they were all from the same kit. And then there's some broken images. HD image of Shirley is currently hosted on Alpha Coder's website, discovered by an account named Darkness, which is inactive. Okay, thank you. I will check that out. So what we have here is some uh, broken images. I guess they had special characters or something. If I open this in Photoshop... Yeah, they're not actually... Yeah, Windows just has trouble displaying them because they're ancient images, I'm guessing. Uh, so what I was doing with these a few weeks ago is I was just trimming out the um, the black border so it's just the image. For some reason, these TIFs were, were shipped with black borders. Look at this amazing still of the Divine Dragon. Like, y'all should have access to that for like profile pictures, fan sites, all that kind of stuff. Fan sites would have been so different and more numerous if they fans just had these assets to begin with. This looks great. This is not upscale. This is the image Sony gave. These freaking, like, tendrils? Or something? I don't know. And, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven eyes divine dragon uh some of the inconsistencies were that the, the eye count was was not sorted out it's supposed to have seven more looks cooler but there's a strict one to seven eye count power level system in in the lore that is otherwise adhered to let's add them all just to see what they look like Ooh, Sandor running away. Unfortunately, very blurry. Nice butt. Um, but these are those, like, anteater horses that are armored, and they're carrying supplies. Like, this is like a, a Morningstar, I'm guessing. They had all different kinds of weapons. Uh, seen in concept art better. Great Commander and Lloyd having a chat. Shauna. Okay, wait, oh, okay. This 
this might be what was used for that wallpaper. So what's the size on this? We got, um... We're gonna find out the size. Bear with me. We're gonna figure out the true size of this image. Six forty by three sixty. Okay, so that's a kind of low res uh, widescreen resolution. But the thing is, the in-game FMVs are not that large, so this is a larger image. And it looks like it could have been as big as that wallpaper almost. That that wallpaper might have been blown up a little bit. This might be where that wallpaper came from. And if the divine tree is in here somewhere, then that would also explain that. Here's Cadessa. And then this background was broken for some reason, but not the other ones. And the mysterious Shirley Dragoon image, which uh, we never found out the exact um, whether it was a real image or not. So we're leaning towards not real, but it's interesting still nonetheless. And it'd be so much easier to figure out if we had just, if I go back in time to when this image was still on the net besides just the fandom wiki and figure out who was hosting this and where'd they get it from. No, Google Lens already did that. It was a whole thing. But yeah, um, so renders, these count. I'm gonna say these count. Okay, Seascape, another part of, um, images that I'm that I'm trying to preserve here is finding the largest source possible that isn't blown up. So sometimes there's like a larger size image but the person just expanded it and resaved it and it looks worse kind of. It's not actually better quality. <clears throat> so it's a matter of getting all my duplicates together and seeing what sizes I have them at and deleting all the smaller ones and um, getting to the biggest images. This is a great render of the Queen Fury. Like they bothered to put all these different barrels in the scene and boxes and ropes and like a fishing net or whatever hanging around. Um, that stairwell looks unrendered almost. <laughs> but uh, all, all this rope stuff with the fraying, as good of fraying as they could achieve back then. And uh, possibly a symbol for Tiburoa with the crescent moon. And super HD Dart and Shauna and Rose. Rose has lipstick because of course she does. Lipstick in medieval fantasy world, right? But look at they had fingernails. That's how detailed these models were. They had freaking fingernails. And this, this glove detail, the loose fitting glove. Dart had fingernails. He's got this chain thing around his vambris or whatever. And all those scuff marks, the, the worn armor. This looks like a cut in the armor almost. That looks like a, a slash or something. Maybe it was Fairbrand. Anyway, so yeah. Oh yeah, birds. We got birds. The elusive, uh, is that a seagull or a goose? I'm not sure. And the light coming from up here is just great. Crow's nest over there. Oh, what I wouldn't give to see more of that. So all of that will be moved over. And I got box art. This, this is gotta be a scan. Unless that's just like a Photoshop layer of 
like what their I don't know what that sticker is called kind of a thing but this looks like a digital image I feel like this is I'm not sure I'll have to investigate that one the name Tiffany yeah <laughs> <coughs> I'm gonna have to go to this Alpha Coder's website. Wallpaper Abyss? A wallpaper community? What, what do they have? This one has the logo, but not... Wait a minute. This one, they, they cut their uh, the head short here. So there's more missing below. There's a whole host of them. That's fan art, for sure. That's a piece of fan art. The map. This is a 1080 crop of the... Okay. Giant Rose... Yeah, this is the original from the press disc. Alright, I'm gonna have to do some research on these. This is fan-made. This was fan-made and put on the Facebook group. I expected more wallpapers, though. Like, there's only 10? Unless they have different keywords. No, but it's, uh... Okay. I guess it's just those. I'm gonna bookmark this. Thank you for mentioning it. I will check it out. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this one. I can't believe I've been streaming for like an hour and a half already. Jeez, I gotta go soon. Um, nice music too. Yeah, this is a uh, Miranda render, scanned in from possibly the guidebook. Pretty nice bow design. Long boot kind of a thing going on here. It's Safi! Hi Safi! Did you just get here? Uh, Divine Eye. Did I move that one over? I don't think I did. I'll copy that over for now. Okay, let's... Those are pretty big, so let's let's get those. No, I'm gonna come back to this because I need I need to fix that that corruption. Oh no, you caught the flu. We we got like the cold or, or flu, and it spread throughout the whole house. It sucked. For those who don't know, this is the Patent Monster. Uh, that's what we've called it. The Patent Monster shows up in Patents, Patents, whatever, for Legend of Dragoon. Um, Sony tried to uh, copyright or, or, or patent the uh, the addition system, uh, doing interactive combos. It may be part of the reason why other games did not show up with interactive combos for a while. But that doesn't explain God of War, sort of. I guess I guess it was just different enough that it didn't matter. Um, but the closest thing has been uh, Lost Odyssey, which has like one timing and it's a circle instead of a square. Um, that might have helped lock it down a bunch. 
and uh, they would show these different diagrams along with this really boring text explaining what the system is and in the diagrams there's like a, a vague humanoid figure uh, charging at this monster and then it shows the different outcomes of like the it shows the addition reticles to guide the player to press X and it also shows what will happen if there's a counter attack and the player doesn't hit the button uh, the player, like, the player figure goes flying in this scene. It's kind of funny. And this, I, I, uh, if you haven't heard me say it before, I think this creature has got the, the face of Crazy Frog. If you know who Crazy Frog is. Face of Crazy Frog, and then the body of a Zapdos from Pokemon. That's, that's what it looks like to me. It's a Crazy Frog Zapdos. Um... You know what? Can I Google Lens this and just see if they even find, if Google Lens will find it in a patent document, if, if they're that smart? Is Google that smart? Search with your camera. <laughs> well, it's it's not finding the, the patent monster, but it's finding a, a whole lot of other similar creatures that have been designed over the years. Yep. Look at all this gorgeous artwork that's not related at all to, to my search. Homestar Runner, nope, nope, not the right thing. Alright, Google Lens cannot scan images in patent documents, apparently. It does not know. Even though Google will otherwise let you search for those patents, I believe. Stuff that's buried in databases and Anyway, that, that's the thing. Alright, let's go to another folder before I run out of time here. Um, instead of images... Oh yeah. This is one of the patents. Um, I lost the other ones, but... Let's see, what was this one about? Oh, here it is. It, I was right. Here it is. We'll, we'll look at this. This is funny. This is the, pa the patent monster, and that's the generic figure with the sword, which is being held in reverse for some reason. And this is 2002, so they didn't do it right away. This is for item magic, I guess? And they had these really complicated diagrams that just could be explained better, you would think. <clears throat> this one's a little more sensible. Read information about main character and monsters. Display battle scene. Determine attack turn. Main character's attack turn. Yes, no. Monsters attack. Um, subtract the HP from the character. Attack a monster with magic spell or item. No. Do something else. Yes. Select monster. Uh, changing rate, charging rate, count predetermined time, game over, item gaining process, all of this minutia. There's other ones for doing the additions, but that's the one for item magic. And this is the Peyton monster. It is a neat document. Gotta go find Doom Metal and see if he still has links to those patents, because I don't know if I still have them anymore. Um... None of those. Research. Um... Scan of vector. Here's a random scan of vector. <laughs> to do. Nope. Unsorted moon image files. Hmm.
Oh yeah, the old threads images. I put these on the website already, I think. Okay, so some of my stuff is missing. I gotta go looking for it. Hmm. <laughs> I forgot about Dark Rough. This is hilarious. Evil Rough. So we actually... This, this, this happened before we started talking about a theory where you could uh, bring Ruff in as a uh, modded party member. Um, and we were going to call him Buff. B-U-F-F. -F. So Buff is basically Ruff reincarnated, and Buff would be able to, in turn... Buff's already a companion. Buff, in turn, would then also have abilities... Like, it would have attacks of its own, but it would also have abilities to summon the other magical creatures, like Buckle... Lulu, Spino, um, and so like if you summon Buckle, Buckle will tell the enemy you are annoying, Uck, and then deal some damage or, or a status effect or something. Just uh, bring out the best of each character. That was the whole thing. Uh, there's the Parasite Dragon again for some reason. Uh, test image... Yeah, I'm running out of areas to check for relevant stuff for the moment, but I will continue sorting my stuff. Um, okay, so I think I will call the stream here. I'm uh, pretty close to the two hour mark I was planning. Uh, Biff. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. Um... So thank you all for coming. I'm going to drop a few links in the chat. Uh, if you're not already a part of our community, we'd love to have you. Um, we've got a website. We've got a Discord. We've got this YouTube. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you would like to see more live streams or rad uh, like pre-recorded videos, we've got a really awesome video coming up in just over a week's time for you. You're not going to believe what we did uh, and are doing to, to uh, tinker around with stuff. Um, more updates on the way with things like these images coming to the website. Um, we've got Discord and things, so thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Uh, if you believe that the work we do is valuable, um, y'all probably already know that Monoxide has a Kofi for Severed Chains. I also have a Kofi for all other things LOD, whether it's uh, website costs, the archivism stuff I do, moderating, anything else. Um, so I'll be putting that in the chat. And I uh, just really appreciate everyone's time thinking this is this is worth seeing. So we'll have some more streams like this as we go. Uh, sometimes it'll be digging into website stuff, image stuff, mix of both like today, uh, usually casual. And uh, that's it. So uh, really appreciate y'all. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Such great music. I think I'll let, I'll let the song finish. It's it's almost done. Almost. And there we go. Okay. Bye, y'all. Take care.